Hello and welcome to Sweet Spot DFS. This is a 2020 preview of the Safeway Open. And I know it's the year 2019, but honestly, it is the 2020 season. So going here on out, if you didn't listen to the few uh, the first few videos, it is the 2020 season. I'm going to call it the 2020 Safeway Open. You might not see that when it comes to uh, looking up things on the PGA website, but to me, it's the 2020. So if you guys were wondering that in the last couple of videos, I never really went over it. That's why it's 2020. As we look at the course history, or I should say the course information, uh, it's a Silverado Country Club, and it's this course has been played since 2014. I know for sure. I can't remember if there was any other there were any other years prior to that. Uh, but it also used to be named the Fries.com tournament. So if you're looking up your own course history or information. Uh, it would be, or tournament history, tournament information. It would be fries.com 2014, 2015, and then from there on it became the Safeway Open. It's played in Napa Valley, California, uh, wine country. It, uh, par 72, just your traditional par 72, four par fives, four par threes, the rest par fours. Uh, interesting finishing, the uh, two of the last three holes are par fives. So I think... To me, I think what makes it more fun to play in DFS is when you have golfers who have the ability to make eagles on par fives. So really, um, I mean, if you pick any of the top tier guys, they all hit the ball pretty far. So you're not going to have an issue with that. But your lower tier guys, perhaps it might be worth playing some of them just, just to uh, have a little bit of drama on that Sunday uh, afternoon. Um yeah, other than that, the the course itself uh it's it's pretty short. There's a lot of uh 300-yard par 4s. And I don't know if any of them will be drivable this week, but they are pretty short. So you know, I wouldn't say distance is going to be a key this week. I know the course is somewhat tree-lined, so definitely Finding golfers who are more accurate would probably be beneficial, but I'm not going to put a lot of weight into that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, the grass type is bent in POA, and if you know anything of, of videos in the past that I do, I know for sure, or not for sure, but it is a common piece of knowledge that POA is the more invasive grass. So POA is going to reign supreme whenever it's mixed with any of the other grasses. Uh, I would not put any stock or weight into the bent part of this. It's it's mainly POA. I would just I would stick to POA if I was you guys. Uh, the redesign was by Robert Trent Jones Jr. He did that in like 1980 something. I can't remember. I don't remember who the original architect was, but it's just worth noting and, and putting on there. Um, I think that's it for the course information. Let's get into the spreadsheet. So I just have the DK page up now. Uh, in all honesty, that is the lineup construction page. So I'm going to switch over to the Safeway Open. I'm sorry. Uh, this is just my typical uh, tournament spreadsheet. The other one was just lineup construction. So what I like to do is look at the recent forms going back, uh, you know, just going over the last few years. Now, this tournament was always played as the first tournament of the year. So there was always kind of a uh, a little off season prior to, I mean, from the tour championship to here. So looking at like the last week stats and really I don't, I should update this kind of like how I did with the Greenbrier and the, and the, um, uh, the uh, Sanderson Farms championship and put a bunch of off, you know, columns in there because, uh, Really, they didn't just come from the Tour Championship in these tournaments or these these pages you'll see. So this is the 2018 recent form page. You're not going to see, um, I mean, it, there, okay, there was an off season. So it's it's definitely worth mentioning there wasn't competitive play, and that's a big deal. I'm I'm a big proponent of recent form having something to do with either choosing to play or not choosing to play. Uh, not so much not having the choice. So definitely I don't have any last week stats. I'm not going by last week. Recent form I'll I'll look into and we'll talk about that right here. 
Uh, so recent form, if we went year to year, you know, 2019, we aren't going to see uh, a lot of good recent form. The 30s are are pretty decent recent form. They're they're pretty good, but you know, 50s, 70s, 80s, you know, not the greatest. One thing I do want to point out, what we will see, I I scroll over here every once in a while to show you what the optimal lineup was, but I really don't do, I I don't really explain what this box is right here. So I, I, I do a count. I will count the total. How many golfers in this, this range right here fell in the top 10 or the top five? So obviously RF is recent form, CH is course history. So I like to keep track of, of that and, and just to look. And what you're gonna find out from year to year is we don't really get any more than two. I shouldn't say any more than two, but it's gonna be around two. So three golfers, um, this one only had one and ended up finishing inside the top five. Uh, I like to kind of look at um, I kind of like to look at percentages. So obviously one golfer in the top five out of three under the, the 20 and under recent form, um, that's a 33% chance, right? Zero to two, zero to two again. I don't know what to make of that. I, I mean, I guess if we were to look at the golfers that did Michael Thompson was one of them. Obviously, in 2019, he wasn't a uh, a superstar player. And then Benjamin Silverman, again, not a, a superstar. In this week's tournament, you have a bunch of superstars right up at the top. So I I don't think we can look at any recent form going back the last couple of years because I, or at least the last... For, for as long as this tournament's been going on, because honestly, nothing compares to this year. We have a better field, uh, better golfers in better recent form. I don't know what to make of that. I will say this though, I think two of these golfers will find the top 10, and I'll be a little bit more bold. I'll, I will say two of these golfers will find the top six. I don't know how, how that's going to look for roster construction. Obviously, anything over... I mean, if you were to roster the top two guys, I think you, you're left with like $6,800 left, uh, which I'm not sure if that's even possible to construct a lineup with that low of a salary, like a decent one. Uh, and it very well could be those two at the top. So it's kind of good that I don't have that information because I wouldn't really so much target those players. We can think about more of a, an even number and just have to deal with the fact that if both of them finish top six or within the top six, it's going to be okay to not play one of them. You just hope to find the one that finished higher than the other. So just wanted to point that out. Recent form is going to be really difficult to look at. Um, course history. This one's a really interesting one also. You're going to see just a ton of... Uh, variety when it comes to course history we have good course history but phil only played it the year before phil has some decent course history i don't remember what he did in 2019 we'd have to go to the course history page just to take take a look at that you know somewhat quickly um again a little bit more of variety so i with the field how it looks now i'm not positive what we should do with all of that all that information so that's that's my i guess my take on this on the course uh i'm sorry the recent form tabs we can look at the course history and just kind of look do i oh no oh no 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 i'm sorry <laughs> it's like where did it go um okay so let's highlight course history let's get rid of the golfers who aren't playing this week actually no 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 we'll take a look so we can see, you know, top 10 in their finishes the year before. Um, I mean, I guess I wanted to find Phil. So Phil finished 17th last year. Okay. So he was third, eighth. I mean, he has pretty decent course history. And, and, and I will filter soon of all the golfers who are playing this week who just by their course history. So 
Um, it does look like anyone in the top five, there's a good chance that you're going to find a, uh, a top 10, 20 finish, you know, the year before. So that is something I've been looking at. Uh, we don't have it in 2016. So that kind of washes that out. But 2015 you do. Uh, 2018 obviously you do. 2019 is a top 20. Um, so I'll go ahead and clear this out and we'll look at course history. So Sung Jae only played it once, uh, a fourth place last year. He obviously would qualify for one of those golfers who finished top 10 last year uh, to finish either top 10 or top 20. At his price tag, I would not, um, I just would not care about that. He has to finish top five. Um, Ryan Moore is actually a, a pretty decent play. I can't remember what his price is, but the fact that he finished second and that's a pretty stellar, uh, course history. Kevin Na also besides 2018, I honestly did not put a lot of stock in Kevin Na. Now seeing this, I might just a little bit more. I didn't, yeah, I just didn't care. Uh, Luke Liss is actually a golfer that. I liked prior to seeing this, so I'll probably be playing a little bit of Luke List. He is one of my uh, mid-tier plays this week that I have kind of going along uh, the little um, slideshow that's going there. Minus this win, so if you take this win out for Emiliano Grillo, it's 31.67. Isn't too bad, but it doesn't put him you know, near the top as he is right now. I know he did win, so obviously it is worth mentioning. It was his first ever time playing. I think it was his first PJ Tour event. Um, so I'd, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that. Bertelli's coming off kind of a hot week. Uh, they are going from Bermuda to Poa, so I don't know how much that's going to play a factor. One of the, the top uh, last week stats is, is not playing the week before. So I will be at least highlighting two of those golfers while I, I make my lineup construction. And then I'll probably come here and grab one or two golfers that finished top 10, top 20 uh, the year before. Um, I guess it's not really worth mentioning anyone else. Not that I can see. You know, Snedeker, I like. But um, yeah, I just don't know. You know, if we were to look here at the, the top 20, I mean, almost everyone who was top 20 last year is playing in this week's tournament or playing in this year's tournament. Um, and really, I mean, it's interesting. We got a bunch of... Uh, okay, we have three decent, and honestly, I'm just going to say Moore and Mickelson. I don't mind Sung Jay. I'm not going to exclude him just because he's only he only has one uh, event here played. But just for the, the fact of consistency, I think I'm just going to highlight Phil and Ryan Moore as golfers, you know, decent to, uh, to choose from. All right, so that's the course history. I'm going to go right into tee times and see if we can find anything about uh, the tee times this, this week. I did not filter this if I remember correctly, so don't mind me. I'll just create that filter right now. Um, Should have came prepared, huh, guys? Thank you for uh, bearing with me here, making it look somewhat decent. So as we go through here, I will uh, just number what I like. Um, I like list, so naturally I'm gonna pair them up with somebody, or not naturally, I'm gonna think about pairing them up with somebody, and I'm just gonna choose those those golfers right there. Laird, I don't mind. Uh, definitely, I can't remember what. Oh, the <laughs> the one thing that popped out was the fact that he was the first tee time off. So I think this week what I'm actually going to target more of are golfers in the afternoon, more so than, than in the morning. Um, I, 
I just have a feeling this is one of those tournaments where it's going to matter having softer conditions uh, on the second day than, than later on. I, 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 I did watch a, a few highlights from years past. It doesn't look like a very firm golf course, uh, but with the POA it, and how it grows, I think I want to target late to morning more so than uh, morning to, to late. And that's without knowing any weather forecasts. So if you know weather forecasts, plan accordingly. Uh, create your lineups based off of that. Uh, I do not like uh, Ben Ann this week, but I do like Kyle Stanley. So maybe that sways me into playing a little uh, Ben Ann. I like <laughs> Sam Ryder. So, and I do like Watney. Ugh, man. All right. I'm not going to like everyone, I swear. But as I go through here, I really like Patrick Rogers. Uh, one of my favorite plays this week, and definitely, I think he's a, a low price play. Yeah, my my top low price play. Um, I don't mind Bud Bud Colley or Scott Brown. They're both gamers. So, yeah, I, I I'm only hesitating right now because I realize I'm gonna like probably it's gonna be difficult not to like a lot of people. Uh, I'm gonna stay away from Corey Connors this week. I think a lot of people, the strategy is to play him since a lot of people were on him last week and he didn't do very well. I don't, I just don't know. And I'm not going to pair him up with any of the golfers that, that are in his playing uh, group. I do like Perez and I do like uh, CT Pan. CT Pan has good POA stats, especially, especially, especially for his price. So definitely worth, uh, you know, at least a look. Charles Howell is playing. I would not sleep on him. Um, and I won't lie, I kind of have been. So the fact that these guys are playing together is not a bad... It's not a bad group whatsoever. This might not be a bad group either, but I'm not going to mark them just for the sake of, you know, marking everything. I do like Molinari. I don't care for DeChambeau this week. Uh, Kevin Tway is not bad, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put much investment in that. I, I'm just gonna leave this alone. If anything, I'm gonna play Molinari as a one-off. Not saying uh, Dechambeau wouldn't be a, a good a good play. I might just pair him up every once in a while. Um, probably staying away from that group. Just don't like anyone who could be known as a circus playing with anybody. This looks like a pretty dynamite group. That's a I mean, Adam Scott has one of the best POA splits from 2019 uh, and overall straight up period. So I think Adam Scott, no matter who he's playing with, is is probably going to boost up those plays. And pairing them up with Matsuyama at their prices, they might be the top two that you want to pair up together. But yeah, I do like that group. Okay, so... Coming down here, I like Doc Redman. I'm not going to mark him. Uh, love Mark. I don't know about his POA splits, but he's somebody I like. So I think what I'm going to do is just do something like that. Um, it's an interesting group. I just want to say it's interesting because Maverick McNeely's in it. And uh, I think it's Neesmith, Matthew Neesmith. Um a young kid and Oppenheim is just a, you know, one of those web.com corn fairy tour players. Um, it's kind of good. Like I'm, I'm not seeing anyone that I really care for that I like, so we can probably go through this fairly quickly. This looks like an interesting group, probably a second rated group for me. This actually is a pretty decent group. I like these guys together. Morgan Hoffman had an injury for a long, a long time that he was healing up for. Uh, this year had a really good finish. I want to say at the center. No, I think at the Greenbrier. Um, and same with Harold Varner the third. I'll have to check their POA splits to see what they look like. Um, but definitely, I think that's worth a play. And now we're getting into the afternoon tea time. So, um. Hearn might not be a bad play. I really don't know his post splits off the top of my head. Matt Every withdrew last week. I don't know what for. 
uh, but he's more of a Bermuda player. Andres Gonzalez is kind of an older player. He might be someone worth playing to go along with Hearn, but I'm just going to leave that alone. This is a decent group. Hadwin and Taylor. I played some Todd last week. Didn't do so great. This is a really good group here. I'll probably look at playing two of these guys. Fratelli had a 25th, I think, last year at this tournament, and he has some really good recent form, and I think he's been kind of coming into his own since last year, which was his debut year on the PJ Tour. This is a pretty decent group as well. I like Lashley. He's got great POA splits. Piercy does pretty well at this golf course and just the West Coast in general. Definitely worth a play, or just at least the look. I like Adam Long. I just was talking about Kevin Nod during the course history. I think that's worth a play. I might play some Landry just to play him. Probably not. This is a hell of a group. Um, so Thomas and Snedeker make my high price plays, I believe. Uh, Thomas and Snedeker really good on POA. But also not to be outdone by uh, Jim Furyk. Furyk is also pretty decent on POA. So I think if you look at the stats that are going by, you will see uh, their names show up every once in a while. Um, can't really, I can't quite remember, but the fact that these three are playing together, pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty special. Another good lineup right here. Definitely gonna mark that down. And that's it. So I don't think I really talked too much about a lot of these afternoon groups and I and I said that I wanted to target um, these afternoon groups. I think I'm going to mark this as a two. Because I like English this week. Vegas and Hoagie are interesting speculative plays. I think I might uh, do that. This isn't a bad B team uh, lineup. No, oh, I, I, I marked quite a few of these afternoon tee times. Okay, so we went through the tee times. If you saw some of the golfers that, uh, or I mean, you heard me talk some about some of your golfers that you like, maybe this gives you a little bit more reinforcement. If you're on the fence, you know, maybe, maybe not so much, but I do like going through the tee times just to get a sense of when it comes to roster creation, you know, what do we like? Um, who should we target? Things of that nature. So... We're gonna go ahead, hide the tee times, the starting holes. I also, I'm not sure about what starting hole really matters. It it tends to vary from week to week and it, there isn't any, you know, really telltale sign. I think I would prefer ending on par fives. Um, but again, that just kind of goes up to the player and it's, it would be really interesting to keep track of top 20s with those players to see what their starting holes were. Uh, once I get a, uh, a, a database finally created, I'm, I will have that information in there because uh, I've been keeping track of it from last year sometime. I don't remember exactly when, but uh, I don't really care about odds either, so I'll hide that. I don't really care about points per game or value. We already talked about recent form. I'm not going to go through that. I really just want to get to the stats, uh, and then we can get into the roster construction. So right away... Uh, the top tier guys, or the top price guys, all have pretty decent POA stats. Uh, at least all the way down to DeChambeau. Molinari, not so great. Uh, more so not great in the, in the fact that he has a 3.3% clip of finding the top 10. And being a top tier golfer, that's not very great. Uh, I will be avoiding him, as I will uh, Byung-Hun An. And An has been kind of you know, he's been playing really well. So it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's really that bold not to play him, but, um, I just, yeah, I don't really feel that confident playing beyond Hanan this week. Leishman on the other hand, that's pretty interesting. 16% mark of finding the top 10. He's been playing pretty awful lately, uh, with Drew during the Greenbrier. So there's a lot, and he withdrew a, a few times, or not a few times, he withdrew at least once near the playoffs, if not in the playoffs. So I don't know what's really going on in his world, but it's definitely worth noting and mentioning. 
Revi, I mean, these plays right here, it might be worth a look of going balanced and doing like a more nah and then maybe filling in the rest of those uh, lineups with their players and their in their groups or, you know, maybe not, not really caring so much about it. Um, yeah, why don't we go and just look at the top POA here. So Scott is at the top and so the stats that are going across, I have the top five. You needed to play at least uh, 12 or at least eight events in order to make this. So these guys here, McCumber and Seifert, one, I mean, one guy played just one event and the other guy played two events. So, and, and he finished pretty high in one of them. I can't remember what it was, I think it was two years ago. So I wouldn't put any stock in playing Seifert whatsoever. Um, but then you get these these golfers here that have you know a plethora of events under their belt and they're all super good. I think you could play anyone in this in this uh, highlighted section that I have, and I don't think you're gonna get disappointed. Especially if you like, you look at the 2019. You know, Matsuyama and Cantley were pretty freaking good. Uh, those three golfers right there. I don't know. I, I, I want to say you need to play two of them. But with their price tag, that's going to be almost impossible. It's going to be very difficult. Um, I, I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out. Because I almost believe that we're going to find... It's, it's, we're going to see like three golfers that are 10k and above inside the top 10. And it's just going to be a crapshoot of trying to figure out which one, which one to play or which one to keep, which one actually not so much which one to play, but which one not to play. Um, and I'll look at the 2019 here. Doc Redman, I like him. Uh, a pretty good up and coming golfer. And then, yeah, a lot of the same. Colin Morikawa jumps up. He obviously had a few events that... Um, Plummeted his overall POA, but his 2019 was pretty good. Nate Lashley was one of those golfers. He does have a victory at the Rocket Mortgage Classic that uh, kind of bumps that up. So now that I think of that, I might not play that much Lashley. Uh, I really don't like when wins. Well, I think it just goes all around. I think a lot of people think the same way. I don't like going... Uh, I don't like when wins drop an average significantly uh same would apply like a top five but if say you had four let's say half your events were top 20s i would much rather have that than say nate lashley with one win and the rest of them like 40 or worse um which is what i think is the case here when uh when i look at that howell i think would be a pretty decent play uh, again, there's Leishman, Streelman just coming off the hot um, finish. He might be worth a play. Um, I, I will be I will be playing uh, a few lineups of Streelman in it now that I look at this. So definitely, definitely on my mind to do. Um, yeah, so I mean, as you can see, or not so much as you can see, but looking at this, you can get your own favorites off of that and, and choose them. But I think I'll, I'll speak a little bit about uh, what I call swing metrics, uh, the swing stats. Not so much metrics. That's not the right word. I, always, I, do, I do use that, but it's not the right word. Uh, I will use swing stats. The best stat I've se uh, that I've seen um, that I would actually use, I saw the, there was a percentage of golfers, or not so much golfers, the stat was proximity, like how close to the hole and what the percentage that they had within that proximity. I think that's probably one of the best swing stats I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm interested into learning that information. I obviously could do the calculations myself, but it would be data mining. And I'm not sure where to mine that other than the PGA website. I, I know there are other websites. 
and I sure as hell am not going to look at uh, every uh, TrackMan uh, piece of data just to see how close a golfer was to a Hulk, and I don't even know if I could keep up. So I don't can't remember where I found or where I saw that. I know it was in an email, so it was, I think, the best stat in my opinion, just because you're tracking the percentage. Um, even if you did a count how many times uh, and or an average per round how many times a golfer was within 10 feet putting for birdie per se that those stats to me are the stats you want not these general tee to green off the tee uh, approach around the green those stats they're just too generalized the uh, the stat I was just talking to you about is baked into the approach but it's just it's not it, you want birdie makers and DraftKings, and the best way to make a birdie is obviously to get the ball closer to the hole. So if you could track that information, oh my goodness, that is that's what you want. So I'm not going to really speak too much on the stats. I think maybe we will when we uh, do some roster construction. So I will do that here. Um, probably keep this video somewhat. Uh, it's still going to be like 40 minutes long, but it's it's going to be shorter than usual. Okay, so what I want to do is go by salary. I didn't pick any favorites. I typically do, like with a column over here on the left side, I will mark either like an I for interested or something. But I think what I want to do is... Well, I honestly, I think I'm going to create lineups. I'm going to start lineups just like this. And it's probably a good way to, sh a good thing to show you. So... Going to the lineup construction page, if I put Justin Thomas there, you're going to see that, uh, you know, average remaining. And then I think I created 40 lineups. So really, I do like JT. I just, I like the other guys equally as much. Um, I think I'm going to give the nod to J JT a little bit more. So I'm going to play him in 15 lineups. Uh, and this is kind of how I start my lineups. I just, I pretty much choose an anchor. And then that's that's kind of how I stick with this. Uh, Cantlay is going to be another one. I will put him in eight lineups. I'll put him in seven. That was just kind of a random. And then I will throw, whoops. I'll throw him in one of these. So yeah, $6,800 it leaves you with. I'll do two just just to kind of mix it up um and then adam scott's another favorite play of mine probably it might even be more than justin uh justin thomas i'll play him in 10 here i'll play him in two here uh and i'll play him two right there as well so now that gives me 14 plays of adam scott just one under justin thomas and then Hideki is going to round it out. Well, for the most, yeah, that's there's my 40 lineup. So there's eight there. I'm just going to put them in one with JT, one with Cantlay, and actually two with Scott. So that kind of uh, fixes that, uh, at least anchors that. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I got, so JT is going to kind of, be my max uh ownership and so we're gonna go with 15 lineups of him i have uh adam scott in 14 lineups i have hideki in 12 and what was it that i had can't land seven eight nine so i have him in nine lineups and then what i like to do is find my low priced guys uh so i'm just gonna come down here and usually again i have these starred so I could even filter by the guys that I like, but I can tell you right now, I know I like um, Patrick Rogers. Trying to find out where he is. Is he like 7,000 maybe? All right, I'll find him. I can find the O button. There you go, 6,700. So that helps out, especially when we're creating these lineups up here. Um, let 
yeah, uh, just just to give a little bit of, you know, what am I trying to say? A little bit of a gap. So I will also, I just, I just started doing this. I'm going to choose how many lineups I'm going to have Rodgers in. I like Rodgers. I like Rodgers just as much as I like JT. So I'm going to put 15 here. And we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to mirror this side over here. But we're going to do something a little different that I think you guys will appreciate a little bit. So I like uh, Max Homa. Uh, but not as much as I like Rogers, so I don't even like them that much. Yeah, I'll put them in five lineups. Um, let's go ahead and hide this in for me. So I want you guys to see what I'm looking at. There we go. Perfect. So like, I'm kind of looking at finding players that either have great POA stats or at least finding the top 10 at a bunch. So there's, there's the Gooch. So we'll put the Gooch in seven times. Uh, yeah, I'll put them in seven. Sometimes I just like to uh, click and drag and just see where fate takes me. <laughs> uh, no, not this time. I do like Sam Ryder. Uh, I like him just as just about as much as the the Gooch. Let's see, is there anyone else down here? Oh, I like Pat Perez as well. Okay, so we're gonna get into an issue here, where now I've just kind of ran out of space, which is totally fine because I also need to find uh, a bunch of golfers over here that will be sub seven thousand as well. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of. do kind of like a overfill or overspill I should say and I'll show you how this will look here shortly um like Anurban probably worth the play honestly uh I'll put him in three I will also play uh Baddeley although I don't really care for Aaron Baddeley yeah I'll just put him in two George McNeil had a good finish last week. Definitely, uh, I guess, worth consideration a little bit. I do like David Hearn. This doesn't actually, that doesn't help me out in believing in him. There's Oppenheim, if you remember uh, him playing with kind of the, the web.com slash Corn Fairy All-Stars that I kind of mentioned before. Uh, KH Lee, this is kind of a weird fall from grace. Uh, last year, he was pretty dynamite in the beginning and then just fell off the edge of the or edge of the earth um yeah now we're getting down to some of these golfers that difficult to see when you look at the poa splits here someone that you really like now stroud on the other hand i don't know why his 2019 was as poor as it was but you know the fact that he has pretty decent stats that's what i'm gonna go with there's Seifert with the uh, 50% uh, top 10, but I'm not going to think too much of that. If you remember, Morgan Hoffman was one of those golfers I like. So now this really should have been this other column since these guys are much cheaper. Uh, so like this column here should have really been here. And this column should have been over here. But it's fine. Um... I'm not going to worry too much about it. And I'm really just throwing, you know, how many lineups would I want of these golfers? That's what's kind of going in my head. Uh, obviously, I have 40, 40 lineups. So if I'm playing someone four times, that's 10%. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily worry about that. That is kind of a higher percentage, but it's, it's fine, especially for some of these guys down here. Um, what's worth looking at is some of these golfers who don't have any POA splits who are somewhat new. Uh, Campos is not new. Raphael, he plays, he's, he's played on tour for a while, but like these guys, uh, haven't really heard of any of them. Um, 
Some of these guys are older, like Colt Nost, John Daly. I would not play them, but they also do have the post splits. I don't know any of these guys besides Tony Romo. Obviously, I think we all know who Tony Romo is. I'm not playing any Tony Romo. Um, interesting here. I mean, I don't know who you would play. I know this guy right here is 17 years old, so you know, up and comer. This is a, a pretty decent amateur, maybe worth the play. Same here, uh, a web.com, or I should say Corn Fairy Tour, darling. And then you don't have anyone else who has not played uh, POA on POA track. So definitely worth a look there. So now I didn't really find anyone else that I liked. So with the remaining here, we have 19. I'm just going to... see 15 lineups okay so what i oh yeah, yeah yeah uh whatever i'll do it we're gonna play a couple more of these guys uh and i will show you what that will look like very shortly i wonder if there was somebody oh i might as well put some sep Maybe more than that, actually. Did I put any long? Oh man, maybe I didn't. Uh, I will actually replace some of Rogers, some of Gooch, and some of Perez. That I'm long. I do like long this week. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. You can only do this in a column, and you really only can do it for Google Sheets. But if you were to right click and randomize the range, you will get kind of a mixture that you can't really uh, create biasly. So this is kind of your lineup generator, honestly, if you were to randomize these. Now you do have to worry about uh, matches. So keep that in mind, um, which is totally fine. I mean, I could easily do something like this, right? Not a big deal. Uh, another one right here. Or, you know, just keep going and randomizing one range over and over again until you don't see Patrick Rogers, you know, paired up with Patrick Rogers. Um, and you could also do a pretty quick uh, if statement. So if H2 equals I2, mark it as a one. If not, keep it blank. And then we can see if I have any matches. So Sam Ryder there, Gooch here. Um, and obviously down the line, since there is information in there. But what we could do is just go like this, right? And now everything is fixed. I don't mind that. And this way, I, I, I can't really bias myself of who I'm pairing up together. Uh, and then I can go ahead and fill in the rest. So that was kind of like a little inside of, of how, or insight of how I create lineups. Just another way. I know you, if you've been here the last couple weeks or last couple times I've done this, um, you have seen something similar to this, but this is a different strategy that I have not shared before. So definitely worth mentioning i think uh and i might tweak these a little bit because i i would rather pl have someone paired up with rogers if i were to go and look at the tea times you know where was patrick rogers he was like one of these no maybe not but like there you go morgan hoffman so if i if i found a morgan hoffman lineup like right here with patrick rogers i would want to play ryan Moore. so i'll put him there you know, and then just look at the price here and then fill in the rest here. That's just kind of my way of doing it. Obviously, you are more than welcome to do it however, any other way that you think uh, works best for you. Uh, I'm going to leave the video at that. We are running just over 40 minutes. So uh, I want to get this out there quick to you guys. Well, not so much quick. It's already Wednesday night. But if you are constructing lineups still or tweaking them, at least this can give you a, a little bit of help, maybe. 
Uh, I will continue to try to get these videos out earlier and earlier. Uh, finally getting on a, a, a decent schedule where um, I'm not busy with other things. And more, more or less settle into my apartment. So I don't really have to do much around here anymore. But I also don't have much planned this weekend. So I should be able to work on this this weekend. Uh, and hopefully I can stage out several weeks in, uh, uh, in ahead or ahead so that, uh, you know, when I pick it back up, it's, it's pretty easy because I had to, I had to enter all the stats in yesterday and today. Um, but that's not really for you guys to care too much about. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up as to what was or is going on in my life. So. With that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like if you like the information. If you uh, have anything to comment, please leave a comment and I will get back to you as quick as possible. Um, and subscribe if you haven't. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good week and make a, a bunch of money. See you later.